right back there. He called us up one day. He said, hey, we've got to get ready and we've got to go to the uh, Illinois Soybean Association meeting to the yield challenge. We won some kind of prize. Well, the yield challenge up there, they keep everything secret, everything we've turned into them. So this year's data that we've collected, we, we can't get that data out of them because they've got it. It's all top secret because there's a first place winner and a second place winner and a third place winner. Well, last year we went up there and we set up a booth. And we won first prize, Biosoil Incorporated. And we picked it up. And we set up our booth and we talked to a lot of young farmers, 23, 22-year-old farmers, come around from uh, SIU, School of Agriculture. They was excited to hear about the microbes and the soil. It really excited us. This is what we did when we was up there. We had Dr. Alan Williams with us. Uh, there's David right beside of him, Phil. Uh, this up here, this is our booth that we set up. You just shipped up the information. We was just there, put it up, started in talking to people. We had 150 pieces of literature we got there. That lasted about a minute and a half, seemed like. We needed about 400 because there was 400 people there. We had a big time though. Okay, well I was sitting in this meeting last year, sitting back there in the back. I was thinking, how in the world can I get this to my, the root system of my plants this year? It hadn't rained since September of the year before. It was, it was as dry as it could be, and we was getting ready to plant. Thank goodness it, it's rained nine inches since then, here in the last two months. Or we, we might not even be even talking about farming this year. But anyway, while I sat back there, I got to thinking, you know, I'm going to put this on in the row on my planter to start with, and then I'm going to broadcast it all over the, the whole profile of the soil, because it is a soil inoculum. So I had two agriculture engineers, and I want them to stand up back here that, that was going to help me with this project. And it's my dad, David Bartow, build a lap. And, they, and here they are standing in the shop. They walked in there and they said, yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. Good luck. And then they left. And that really helped out a whole lot. But we did. We got it on this planter. And right here's how we did it. We mounted us a tank on there, which had a system that divides it to each one of the rows. We have a Keaton soil firmers, which is this little white thing right down, furl applicators. And it pumps out their Sumagro right in the row, right on top of that seed because it's, it's totally organic, so it does not hurt the seed to put it right on top of it, and that's how we started out. This right here is our mixing systems that we go out and we, nur we nurse our sprayer with, this first truck right here. The one in the background right there, that's the one that hauls the sumer girl out to the planter. That's how we get her there. Okay, then after we get this all taken care of, this happens to be our second grower meeting. We had, we had one down at uh, SIC College, and we invited a bunch of farmers in. Wayne come up, and we had a really good meeting. But this in here happened to be the second uh, meeting that we had, and it was at David's house. And, and we invited the Peabody people in. Uh, Dr. Alan Williams was there. Ryan Harbison there, which is with David. And Dean LaBella, and he is, he is in sales. Kind of looks like a football team. I'll tell you what, we could hike the ball right there. I'd want to be standing behind them. I, think, I don't believe you could run over them very easy. So, I don't live in Missouri, but I'm kind of like my brother. You have to show me. Show me this will work. So one day, I, I, I took care of the flowers in the church in the basement. And we had a, a woman who had passed away, and her flowers was down there. And every Sunday, it was my job to water the flowers in the basement. And I had this here piece of lily down there, and I'd water him every Sunday, and he just looked like he was going to die, 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 die. About eight weeks later, it was almost dead. And I went up to the man that, uh, it was his mother had passed away, and I said, hey, can I take that flower home? I'll either kill it or something's going to happen different. I don't know. It's just going to die the way it is. You know, these flowers are just in kind of like nothing. It's not even soil. So anyway, I took it home. Whenever I got it home, my mom called me and said, let's go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Can you be down here in about 10 minutes? I said, Mom, all I got to do, I, I've got to water this plant. I already had my summer girl made up in a jug, and I watered it, and I got to take a picture, and then I'll be right there. And that's what I did. I, I just barely got it. That's in my, barely in my back door. 
And we was gone all day long for 12 hours. I walked in, it was night, flipped on the light, and there was this piece little like, ha, huh, here I am, look at me. And I thought, wow. I mean, I had watered and watered and watered this thing, and how in the world did we have such a recovery in just 12 hours? If you look real close at that, you can see black leaves, black stems. It was just hanging over the pot like this. How did it look like that in 12 hours? And then there's what it looked like a week later, which was trying to show me. thought I was from Missouri. This right here is that Dean Lavellet that was at that, and then one of the, the three linebackers there a while ago. This is his garden. And, and Dean has been here, he's been to training meetings. Uh, he had decided that he was going to test this product and he, he wanted to be showed too. So he went out there and, and he's never put any artificial fertilizer on this garden. And he, and he sprayed her down real good with Sumagro. And there's the beginning picture right here. And then right there is, that's what it looked like a few weeks later. Uh, I would go down, we had 1.78 inches of rain last year from the time we started farming, which was in March the 20th, till about September the 1st. We cannot grow a crop on 1.78 inches. This garden seen 1.78 inches. I would go down there to Dean's garden, I'd take my foot and I'd scrape her back, and it was moist. Now, now he, he did put the sumer grow on, I'm not sure how much he had on. Probably he had a gallon on that, and that's only a quarter of an acre. Uh, it was moist. We would go over in the, in the uh, bean field right beside this, and it was hard. You could stick your knife in the ground and break, break the blade out of it. That's how hard the ground was at this point right here. And Dean had a garden. He had, he had an arrangement with his wife that he did all the tilling, he did all the planting, he got it all the way out there. And her job was to pick it and give it away. She says, we're going to have to renegotiate this contract. She said it about worked her to death, giving them zucchini squash, them cabbage, tomatoes. And she had to pick the tar out of the green beans. She says, what if it would have rained? What would we have had to done? Wow. We got to have a different arrangement. Now, we go, we go to my cousin, Gene DeLapp. And, and, and Gene, he purchased Sumagro on about 200 acres. And I'll show you where it's at here in just a second because he pointed it out to me the other day. But anyway, Gene had an idea that he would take a bucket, saw the bottom out of it, and he would plant his tomatoes in there and then he would take a lawn mower and he'd mow around it and he'd call them no-till tomatoes. He'd just mow it. Well, the day that I happened to pull up there, he happened to be out there watering these tomatoes when I took these pictures. And, and what we've got right here, the... Uh, the tomatoes on the left-hand side, he told me the other day, did not have Sumagro on them. The row that he's watering had Sumagro, and this row right on the right-hand side had Sumagro. They all looked pretty good that day, even though the grass was just about to die. And if you look back there at the corn, it had already missed pollination. That's how tough it was. But he was watering these plants. He told me just a few days ago, he said, well, you should have come back and took another picture. Well, I guess I should have. But over here where these tomatoes are growing over here, on the, uh, I think that's the left-hand side. That is the best part of the ground, he said, because as you come toward this road, it gets lighter, a lot lighter. It don't seem like it's not very far. He said they all died. He said, I only got about two or three tomatoes from that row there on the left side. He said them other two rows produced tomatoes right up till a couple of frosts. He said it was wonderful stuff. And he also pointed out that them soybeans down there behind, way back in the background there, them had Sumagro, about 200 acres worth of Sumagro. They was a little later planted than ours, but they made 50 to 60 bushel because they got one last rain. They waited, they waited, they waited. They done really well for the middle of a drought. Okay, this, this picture right here is uh, on coal mine restoration, restoration ground, which means a strip mine ground. And if you look in the background, that's, that's Peabody Coal Mine. And we was out there, we collected the best information that we never want to collect again 